Hi, welcome to a fun and delicious celebration of potentially the, the greatest day of all to celebrate with friends, family, food and wine, Thanksgiving. Today we've assembled some of our favorite, not just delicious wines, but great values as well. Um, we believe that at Heinen's that you don't need to spend a lot to get a lot. And we've put some very, very arduous uh, work into finding these great selections that are versatile with the, all the flavors that will be at the table and all the foods at the table. Uh, they're delicious and again, they're, they're tremendous values and um, we're excited to share them with you. So what we have today are what we're going to say is the, the appetizer wine and then two main course wines um, and then a dessert wine. So we're going to try to cover all the bases today um, to get you the best solutions for your Thanksgiving feast. Um, certainly the, uh, the suggestions are really, uh, you're limited by your imagination when it comes to pairings. We also have some cheese uh, pairings that we're going to do today. If you want to do, and like some people do, myself included, uh, like to just have all the wines open from start to finish. In other words, uh, the, the, the bubbles to start, the Chardonnay, the Pinot Noir, they can be open when, uh, for appetizers and then transition right into the meal itself. But that's up to you. Uh, you can't make any wrong decisions unless you're on a wine because you didn't buy enough. That might be the only one. But um, we really think that these wines will really deliver uh, great enjoyment to you, your family, and friends uh, during the Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to start off with the best way to start off a day, a meal, a year, a decade, a celebration, um, bubbles. And in this case, we have the Chandon Brut Rosé from Napa Valley, California. Now, bubbles are, are not just for celebrations. Um, and we recognize that it bubbles, and for the sake of this uh, exercise, we're going to say that bubbles are uh, can kind of all be grouped together between uh, sparkling wines, champagnes, proseccos, cabas, things like that. If it's a, a wine that sparkles, uh, we're going to call it sparkling wine or bubbles. Um, they're all made very differently, and this is another story for another time, but um, sparkling wine um, is just a great way to start. It refreshes the palate, um, and it's something that people don't have enough times with food. And I like to say that um, with the, the bubbles in particular, the best friend uh, for bubbles are salt and fat, um, primarily because with the bubbles, the acidity, the crispness, uh, it cuts through the richness of foods. In this case, we'll talk about the cheeses, and the saltiness will bring out even more fruit character in the wine. Now, this is one of our absolute favorite uh, bubbles from California. Chandon is one of the early, early pioneers of uh, not just Napa Valley sparkling wine production, but uh, California as well. And this is their Brut Rosé. Uh, don't let the color fool you. It's not sweet. It's a bone dry uh, example of um, sparkling Brut Rosé. Brut meaning the driest style of them all. When you smell the wine, hopefully, uh, You'll, you'll get some of the holiday notes in there. It almost smells like cranberry sauce or um, um, like kind of winter or uh, uh, cooking spices that would be very, very evocative of this time of the year. So please don't um, uh, not really pay attention to, to the nose of any wine, but certainly the bubbles because it really, really, uh, because of the carbon dioxide, all of the bubbles uh, breaking in the glass, really provides some great, great aromatics. Now the taste, Again, bone dry. Um, this is made from two classic uh, bubbles grapes, champagne grapes from around the world. It's predominantly Chardonnay, believe it or not, despite the color, and a little bit, of, a little splash of Pinot Noir to give the wine some uh, backbone and obviously color. If there's such thing as a big sparkling wine, this is it. There's a lot of flavor to it, despite the fact that it's very crisp and refreshing and easy to drink. Um, it just tastes awfully, awfully good. And uh, for under $20, um, it is really one of our best. Uh, oh, they're all great values, as I mentioned earlier, but it's really one of the uh, superior bubbles values we have from anywhere in the world. Um, as I said, this would be great with any appetizer that you're going to have before the feast. Um, shrimp cocktails, if you have a shrimp board out, um, charcuteries, cheeses, 
really, really anything. It's it's as, as versatile as it is delicious. Um, we do have specific cheese pairings that we are recommending today. And uh, the first cheese that we're going to pair and recommend with this wine in particular uh, is a cheese made uh, in Cleveland at the Old Brooklyn uh, Creamery. Uh, really, really um, one of our favorite new and local um, cheese producers. They're doing things the old world way. Uh, the flavors are amazing. They're um, just delicious, delicious cheeses, very versatile. And uh, the cheese we have today to go with the bubbles is called Teffenhart from Old Brooklyn. And it is a harder cheese. Um, it really, it's dense and it almost feels like, like um, kind of like an Asiago or a little bit like a softer Parmesan in your hand. So there's some great density in there. Um, but it's something that will provide great salt and fat like we talked about earlier. That'll be a perfect complement to the bubbles. So let's just make sure and see if it's, if it's as good as I know it's gonna be. Hmm. The cheese itself, massive, massive flavors. Um, I really can't define it as it tastes like this. It tastes like a lot of things. Um, it has the savory notes of um, a, a really, really good cheddar, but also the earthiness of like a mountain cheese, like a gorgonzola, but just an amazing amount of flavor. Um, cheeses like this never cease to amaze me because they pack so much flavor in just a teeny little bite. With the uh, wine, hopefully, if you're lucky enough to have the cheeses today, you'll notice that not only is the pairing really, really spot on, but the, the wine almost tastes bigger in that um, the, the, the salt, the fat, like we talked about a, a couple times, has really enabled the wine to develop even more uh, pronounced flavors to not just complement, but to evolve in flavors. It invites another sip and another bite, and again, a great way to, to get the, uh, the party started and uh, just absolutely delicious. And if you haven't had a, uh, a sparkling rosé ever, we really can't recommend this one highly enough that this would be uh, the one to start off with. Now we're going to get into the uh, the white wine. And when speaking really white wines in general and white wines that um, everyone will enjoy, Chardonnay is the beginning and end. And that is no knock whatsoever on any other white varietal like Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling or any of the, the, the funky crisp whites from around the world. Uh, Chardonnay is the most popular white wine in the world for a reason. Um, it really goes along and goes great with a lot of foods. It can be made in various different styles from a really, really big, rich butterball Chardonnay to ones that have higher acidity. It's really a chameleon grape. The Chardonnay grape by itself is kind of neutral in flavor and um, neutral meaning it just, uh, it is, it's better when it is made into great wine, either where it's grown to reflect the, uh, the character of the vineyards and the, the terroir or uh, in barrels to give that oakiness, butteriness, uh, different kind of uh, techniques in terms of uh, secondary fermentation. It's a grape that really welcomes uh, manipulation or wine making from the winemaker. And um, you can really, there, there's just not really one style of Chardonnay, even though that buttery rich style is kind of like the contemporary popular style. Um, we like this one because we believe that it hits all the notes that Chardonnay fans will love and people that are just looking for a really, really good glass of white wine will also appreciate. This is a brand new wine uh, discovery for us called Nielsen. It is from Santa Barbara County in California. Uh, Santa Barbara, if, you're, if you've not been out there and not familiar with that, uh, with the more familiar names is Napa and Sonoma. Santa Barbara is south of Monterey, right along the Pacific Ocean. Really, really, really uh, gets a lot of um, oceanic influence. Uh, what that means to, to you and I and certainly the grapes, um, the, the closer you are to uh, the ocean in California, Washington, Oregon, any, any place out west, the closer you are to the ocean, the cooler the, the, uh, the, the vineyards are going to be. And cool climate grapes like Chardonnay, for example, uh, really, really like that extra time because um, it really provides and uh, protects the Chardonnay's natural acidity. In other words, the crispness, the backbone of the wine. This one, when you smell it, um, <laughs> I guess you could say, well, it smells like Chardonnay, and that's entirely accurate. But why does it smell like Chardonnay? And I think certainly the telltale butteriness, which is derived from oak aging, barrel aging, barrel fermentation, is certainly present. But there's also, and, and I pick this up a lot of times from Santa Barbara Chardonnays, there's a real brightness, um, brightness of uh, uh, the fruit, um, perfuminess. It's just, it just doesn't smell like, like a barrel. There's 
really just some pretty uh, just you know, ripeness. Uh, it smells like a ripe apple or a ripe pear. Maybe a little bit of tropical notes. Sometimes, yeah, tropical notes for sure. You can find some kind of uh, pineapple notes um, in, in wines from Santa Barbara, um, and they're not sweet. Um, I'm kind of illustrating all these ripe characteristics, but uh, they're just augmented by ripe fruit flavors with really vibrant acidity. So let's give this a taste and see if all those things we just talked about translate to the wine in the glass and on your palate. Spoil alert, yeah, they do. Um, which really almost kind of paradoxical of a wine like this, that really when you first taste it and you get it in your mouth and on your palate, it really, really um, provides a great amount of uh, uh, body on the palate. Very, very uh, rich and complex, but then it finishes crisp, it finishes bright, as I said earlier. Um, it, it just really, uh, the acid provides a great balance to all those ripe fruit flavors. Um, it, it, you really balance in a wine means that not one thing in particular really stands out. So if you didn't have that bright acidity in this wine, this wine would be flabby. It would just be overly uh, ripe or overly oaky. The acidity is what kind of keeps all the flavors in check. Um, really a magnificent Chardonnay. Like, like I said, uh, Chardonnay for really the masses, but it's, the quality is amazing. And uh, for under $15, we believe you can't find a better Chardonnay out there. And uh, that it has the pedigree of a great growing region like uh, Santa Barbara is really, really spectacular. It has a great story to be told. Uh, it's a, uh, Byron is the, the winery that makes this, even though it's called Nielsen. Uh, Byron is a long-established, very, very, very well thought of, uh, prestigious winery in Santa Barbara, and this is just their kind of entry-level Chardonnay that just uh, offers a lot and costs a little. Now, whereas we're talking appetizers now, we'll talk about the table first. So let's talk about the cheese, and this is something that's brand new to Heinen's. This is the Heinen's Triple Cream Brie. Uh, triple Cream meaning, well, it's a cardiologist special. Uh, it means there's a lot of butter fat uh, in this cheese. Don't let it scare you um, because if A, it's the holidays, and B, uh, really, uh, you're going to have butter fat in, in cheese, and that's why we love it so much. But in, in um, moderation, anything is great, and certainly cheeses like this. You don't need to eat a lot. You don't want to eat too much cheese before the feast because uh, you, know, you want to save room for dinner. And I'm guilty of that. These cheeses sometimes are just so tasty that you really got to stand back and walk away because you can fill up on cheese, which would be kind of silly. But so triple cream brie, um, we chose this as a really good um, uh, study in uh, not just balance, but similar flavors and similar uh, mouthfeels and textures. Uh, Chardonnay can be called a buttery kind of a, a wine, and this one certainly is, with a real buttery, creamy cheese. So what we're going to try to do here is, uh, is do richness and butteriness uh, on both angles to also then to create one specific flavor and see if they complement each other as, as well as we hope they will. So let's try that. If you like brie, you're going to love this. That richness in the mouth, it's fresh and really, really creamy. It's everything that um, people love about brie. Um, Chardonnay is popular for a reason, so is brie. And this one is really spectacular, and we're looking forward to having you try uh, the Heinz labeled uh, cheese that we, we are bringing in direct. Um, and it's really, really tasty. The pairing, though, just like with the bubbles, the cheese pairing just really, really makes the wine uh, taste bigger, um, which is obviously it's not possible, but it just brings out more flavor. Um, you're, you're kind of mitigating the acidity. Um, with the cheese, and that allows the fruit flavors to really come forward. It really, really uh, just balances. And again, this is a very, very rich um, uh, cheese, but you still taste the wine. You still taste a great balance. And again, that is indicative of what a great food wine is all about. Certainly, turkey is going to be on the table and omnipresent. Um, but with this wine in particular, um, our stores have some really phenomenal uh, in-house made side dishes. And in particular with this, I think that uh, we do a really amazing green bean casserole. Green bean casseroles, historically, and this one certainly is, are rich and creamy. So you're, again, um, uh, tying together that creaminess with the wine in a side dish. And I um, really think that would be 
phenomenal and I'm actually talking myself into doing that right now. So it's one one thing already off the list for Thanksgiving is the Heinz green, uh, green bean casserole. That'd be a really, really nice pairing um, as a side dish for not just the turkey, but the wine also. So now let's move into the, the red wine suggestion that we have. And whereas Chardonnay seems to be um, the, the premier choice for white wine for Thanksgiving and for the meal, um, Pinot Noir is that way with the red. Uh, reasons being Pinot Noir, if you've you're not familiar with or have not had a good Pinot Noir in a long time. A little bit lighter body than things like Cabernet or Malbec or Merlot. Um, it really allows the fruit to, to shine and be balanced, but it doesn't dominate all the flavors that are at the table. And there are a lot of flavors at the table, from the cranberry sauce to the green bean casserole to the turkey, the stuffing. We'll talk about stuffing in a second. There's just a lot of flavors going on. So you want a wine, red or, red or white, that will complement and, and and not not uh, have anything be overbalanced. Now again, there's many many things going on at the table, and uh, worried about balancing your wine choices with your foods probably should not be on your list. That's why you have us. But um, we can absolutely say with absolute certainty that these wines will make you look like a rock star because they're going to balance out and complement the flavors at the table so well. This really special Pinot Noir is a collaboration between Heinen's and our friends at the Michael Pazan Winery in Napa. Uh, this is the 2018 Carneros Pinot Noir from Michael Pazan. Um, a couple things. First of all, uh, this is the second year in a row we've done this. We, uh, we uh, made this wine in collaboration with Michael Pazan himself. Uh, our team went to California last year and, uh, uh, and, and made a really amazing, amazing Carneros Pinot Noir from the 2017 vintage. This is the new vintage, which is 18. And what really makes this wine special, Carneros is a, a sub-region that actually straddles Napa and Sonoma counties in California. It's the only um, region that shares two counties. And Carneros was really the first, uh, or primarily one of the first um, identified regions, not just in Napa or Sonoma, but really in California, to produce world-class Pinot Noir. Um, there's a lot of champagne or, or sparkling producers uh, that, that set up shop down in Carneros and really uh, it has really become uh, and, and stayed the one of the hotbeds and epicenters for California Pinot Noir uh, and, and Carneros for, uh, for Pinot Noir fans is easily recognizable. They really uh, grow some of the best Pinot Noirs in California. The great thing about this is you can get a magnificent example of not just Pinot Noir but Carneros Pinot Noir. Um, for under $15, and this is why we're so excited about this wine every year, that we uh, believe that this is just as good as Pinot Noir gets for the money, and it obviously has to taste good, and it certainly does. Now, aromatically, Pinot Noir, unlike Chardonnay that, that really, as, as we talked about, needs some wine making to develop the, some of the characters in the wine, um, Pinot Noir always tastes and sm or smells like Pinot Noir. That means there's perfuminess, there's earthiness, um, red fruits like cherries and cranberries, and I'm not just saying that because it's Thanksgiving, but there really are absolute tea is another thing that sometimes uh, black tea you'll find in Pinot Noirs, and it's certainly from Carneros. It's cool climate, just like Santa Barbara, but a little bit further north. Um, cool climate grapes like Chardonnay and Pinot Noir really benefit um, aromatically um, from the cool climate because the, the fruit flavors are not overly ripe and they're, they're really in check and balance. There's ripeness there, but it really speaks to ripe fruit versus overripe wine. Now, once again, with cool climate, what you need to look for is great acidity. And this is really what makes Pinot Noir a special wine for food, is that it's a big uh, red, quote unquote, but with great acidity that really uh, allows the, the wine to complement a, a vast array of flavors. Let's give it a taste. It just smells amazing. It's just spicy and almost like some nutmeg in there. Um, I'm really, perhaps I'm, I'm kind of biased. I'm thinking about Thanksgiving, but it really, it smells like a wine that if you're imagining what Thanksgiving dinner is and what you want to drink with it, just by smelling this, it just kind of gets you right there. Again, a wine that has this brightness and, 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 um, Easy-going personality still has amazing amounts of flavor 
and complexities. And it's just a, a fun, uh, fun red wine that is, is just delicious and versatile. Those cranberry notes are coming out, those dark cherry notes are coming out again. And it really is something that is just fun and, and super. And uh, you can get this great value in our stores uh, while we have it. It always sells out. So um, really recommend if this is something that you enjoy uh, to grab it while you can until the next vintage will be next year, obviously. The food pairing, besides turkey, the cheese pairing, let's just say, is made in California, not too far away from the uh, where Carneros is. Uh, Point Reyes is a national seashore, and Point Reyes is a creamery, a, far, a, creamery, a farmer's state creamery right, right on the Pacific Ocean. And this cheese is the Point Reyes uh, Toma truffle. And Toma is a uh, uh, Italian-style cheese. It's almost like a fontina, if that makes any sense at all. But there's some real Italian truffles that are added into the cheese itself. What, not just for, um, uh, obviously, Thanksgiving, but some classic and gr wonderful pairings with uh, Pinot Noir is grilled salmon is, is phenomenal. And the other thing that when I, I think Pinot Noir, I always think of mushrooms. Um, there's an earthiness in the wine that really, really is, is uh, echoed in mushrooms and umami and things like that. And kind of is that nod to a, a great mushroom um, opportunity. Again, because of the holidays, truffles are a luxurious treat. We chose the uh, Point Reyes Toma Truffle. Let's give that a taste. Truffles are the greatest thing in the world, first of all, in case there's any doubt in that. They're, the earthiness, the truffliness of that cheese, a little goes a long way, but truffle flavor is is almost like a, a mint can kind of uh, go right through your head, through your sinuses, and it just envelops all your senses with that incredible truffle flavor. And what's beautiful about this is that it's not just singularly truffles. It, it, it's a wonderful cheese that has truffle flavor to it, and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, if you have it on the cheese board, that's great. If you really want to do maybe uh, the morning after Thanksgiving, if, if uh, there's some leftovers, that melted in an omelet with, with well, if you want to do Pinot Noir for brunch or a Brut Rosé for lunch, would be spectacular. Let's give it a taste to see how the balance worked. Well, I hope that there is some, some synergy that you see how, in a very, very uh, bite-sized example, how that truffle, that truffle mushrooms earthiness really, really, really uh, is, is echoed in the Pinot Noir. Um, the flavors complement each other uh, really, really, really well, and that's a delicious little pairing. But certainly with turkey, which is a big poultry and all the flavors that are in there, uh, you want a wine that is going to stay up to that, but um, not overpower, and, and um, you really can't beat that for a wine with turkey. Um, and then down the road some salmon, as we talked about. Now, sadly, um, we have our final wine of our, our little tasting today. And dessert wines are an often overlooked um, opportunity for, for entertaining and for enjoying. Everybody has dessert um, at Thanksgiving and, and certain celebrational meals. And we often forget, we meaning ourselves, wine lovers, you at home, our, 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 our uh, customers, that dessert is still a course. Dessert is part of the meal. So at least for Thanksgiving, it really demands that you have a wine to go with the dessert course. And really one of the ultimate um, dessert wines or after dinner wines are port wines. And they are, uh, this one in particular, the Dow's Ruby Port is from Portugal. There's a, uh, a town called Oporto in Portugal where the, the port wine uh, uh, movement and um, uh, beginnings of the port industry started. And it's still today uh, the epicenter of port wines. Um, it's a very, very uh, unique place in the world to grow grapes. It's very, very hot. And the, uh, the grapes there, uh, back in the day, they were really not as palatable for wine as they are today. And um, what they did is they, they made these port wines, which is essentially, it's a red wine that still has its natural sweetness. They stop fermentation, meaning when a wine is fermented, and it's fermented dry, all the sugar is gone. When you stop fermentation before all that sugar has been eaten up by the yeast, 
the, the grape sweetness will still stay in there. And they stop fermentation in port with the addition of a neutral grape brandy. So what you're doing is two things. You're stopping fermentation to preserve that sweetness of the grapes. And you're also increasing the alcohol levels and intensity from, let's say, the, the wine, if it was fermented dry, it would be maybe 14%. Ports are usually around 20%. So they're, they're, they're meant to be respected. A little goes a long way, both in terms of the, the just the, the uh, sheer uh, volume of, of the, uh, the wine itself in terms of the alcohol. But because of the sweetness, it's something that you sip. It's something that complements. And uh, you really don't need a lot to get. Um, certainly, it's like having a whole bunch of dessert. Eventually, the sugar is going to get you. And you don't want to really uh, catch a sugar buzz off of desserts and the, the, the port wine. But certainly, the key to a dessert wine and dessert is, and the reason port wine or other great dessert wines like Sauterne or uh, uh, sweeter sherries down the line, they need to be sweet because why? Well, the desserts are sweet. So you balance out the sweetness and the sweetness, and you, you'll get a lot of great flavors. And uh, if you did a dry wine, if you did the Pinot Noir, you did a Chardonnay, with anything sweet, that's going to make any dry wine taste bitter. So you absolutely need to have a wine of sweetness to match the sweetness of the dessert. So this is, as I mentioned, the Dow's Ruby. Ruby, just without going off the deep end and uh, going too crazy on what port wine is, Ruby is a, a, uh, a port wine that does not have a lot of barrel character to it. It's produced young. It's meant to be drunk young um, and uh, while it's in its youth. So... There's not a whole lot of barrel character in there, meaning oakiness. Um, ports can be aged in barrels for decades and decades and decades. And vintage ports are meant to be saved for uh, uh, your kids and sometimes your kids' kids to enjoy. This is a wine that's meant to be uh, drank now and consumed now and just to bring great enjoyment uh, affordably uh, to the dinner table. So you get that earthiness. It, it's, it almost smells like, like tobacco and raisins and maybe, yeah, well, just say tobacco and raisins. I don't need to have three adjectives involved. Now let's give it a taste. Same flavors. It really fills out the palate, not just with the sweetness. And when I say sweetness, it's not, it's not horribly, it's not overtly sweet. It's not like when you have dessert, yes, there's sweetness there, but you just don't say, I can't eat this dessert because it's too sweet. No one says that. This wine has sweetness, but it tastes like wine that happens to be sweet. You get a little bit of that warmth from the alcohol in there. It really is bright and fun, and it makes you want to think, well, heck, what are we going to have for dessert? And we are going to enjoy uh, something that we, we make during the holidays every year at Heinen's. It is a, the Heinen's Pumpkin Roll. And um, this this is kryptonite to me. Uh, I'm thankful that we only make this once a year because uh, it's, it's delicious. Essentially, it's a pumpkin, uh, like a pumpkin sponge cake or pumpkin cake that's rolled with um, cream cheese, so it has the, the, the cakiness to it, it has the creaminess to it, it, it has all those pumpkin spices, but it's really, um, it's not pumpkin pie, but it's a, it's a great seasonal thing that is uh, a little bit different and, and absolutely delicious. So what we're going to do is taste the, the, um, the pumpkin roll and then taste the port because obviously we have sweetness here, we have sweetness in the wine, and what I'd like you to look for is when you taste the pumpkin roll and then try the wine again, I believe you'll notice that the wine tastes drier or doesn't taste as sweet as it did on that first taste there because the sweetness of the pumpkin roll will balance out the sugars. Let's try it. Yeah, pure evil. So delicious. So let's see. Will the wine taste not as sweet as it did before? My answer is yes. Um, it brings out the tannins, the chewiness. Um, it, the balance is great. There's a just a, a a great symmetry of flavors, of sweetnesses, and it really, really works out extraordinarily well. Please don't forget to have dessert wine because it's a nice little way to finish the meal. Um, it, it's just maybe sometimes as special as the bubbles can be, and it's a great way to finish off um, a great feast and a great celebration. Well, we hope you've enjoyed these wines uh, as much as we've enjoyed finding them for you. And we look forward to your continued comments on, on these wines. They, uh, they are virtual tastings. And look forward to uh, next month we'll talk about some holiday splurge wines that are great for gift giving or just kind of 
cutting loose and celebrating the fact that it's Christmas and um, they're, they're fun special wines that we look forward to sharing with those, uh, those with you next month. From us at Highness, we wish you a happy, safe, and healthy Thanksgiving, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers. Thank you.